So we will now welcome Estefania Montel Botias from the lab Alice, Atelier de la Conception de l'Espace. She is in her third year, and her presentation is titled Architecture of Emergency Sentinel Operation for a Rapidly Changing Environment. Thank you very much for, for the organization and for being here today. So, um, so I, I just started my third year of the PhD at the Alice Lab, uh, and the thesis is co-directed by Dieter Pitts and Lucia Jalono Yarzun. And the, the thesis is in architecture and urban studies. Well, the main topic of the thesis is the architectures of emergency and with the aim of analyzing the impact that the state of emergency has in on spatial practice. Um, today I'm going to, to present the current state of the thesis that when I right now I'm developing a case study in Switzerland. Um, with the concept of the sentinel architectures. That is why the subtitle is about sentinel, sentinel operations for a rapidly changing environment. So as I always start in my presentation, we are in a moment defined by the management of emergencies. And Western societies make us use the state of emergency to manage periods of uncertainty. Um, in a way that it has to respond efficiently to these moments in order to return to this abstract state of normality that we have created. Uh, these conditions generate a, a series of meanings which are materialized and spatialized through protocols that are in a way very much internationalized. Uh, however, our perception of these eight events and the meanings we assign to them are important to how sociality relate, relates to the environment system that we are in it. So in times of disruptions, we are more aware of the interdependencies that constat our communities of life. And the objective of the thesis is to bring all these other imaginaries like the ecosystem that the emergency and these, these events create um, from the spatial and care practice. So to start uh, the question of how the, the state of emergency operates in a very dramatical way, um, I use the concept of proto-territory from Brian Masumin's reflections on war and weather when uh, he writes that it's in the proto-territory where the recurrent accident occurs. Here are the elements in blue. And at the same time, the process of its control, defined here as anti-accident, are rehearsed. And it's in this um, proto-territory where the, this anti-accident is uh, constructed by space, uh, emergency special plans, library of actions, protocols, banks of reference, to make up the anti-accident and influence, in a way, also the formation of the accident. So it creates this matrix of, of interconnected scenarios, adaptive modulations for this illusory uh, practice um, to exit a, a state of emergency. Control is not only spatial, but it's also temporal. Um, the present is in a way abducted by the future, by the force of the potential event and its simulations. At the level of urban planning and architecture, this architectures become these artifacts of global showcase of security and climate reprogramming under this, policy, under this publicity of climate smart device. They become these constant, constant readers of the, of the change in the environment. That is why I, become, I began to conceptualize the, the concept of sentinels, sentinel architectures. And the sentinels are defined are this set of living beings or technical device that provide the first signals of a possible catastrophe. 
It comes from the Latin verb sentire, that is to feel, but also to make sense of something. Um, they assemble this process of recognizing a possible event, interpreting data, activating a, re a response to alarms, when a certain threshold has been passed. These ways of functioning goes from our bodies with the with the dendritic test to the planetary system with a, a, sense, a sensible device as the, for example, here in big, the DART system that are the deposition assessment and reporting for tsunamis that they, they continue readings of the ocean surface. So this is a, a planetary organization of these, uh, of these sensors to detect uh, this abrupt change of, of, of a state that could be a reading of a possible tsunami. So that we have this data reading, we have this threshold, we have also this uh, communication system and uh, with the enactment of the possible event in a, in a, in a in cell with these preparedness plans and simulation of, of possibilities. Um, on also on the communication system and um, if, in a way in, with the architectural perspective, all this spatial coordination is very cent uh, centralized in the emergency management center. That is a typology that I have been very interested in the last month uh, because it's becoming a key global governance architecture. They are like uh, from COVID, they are appearing in every in every city or every small village, um, are the reading and coordination centers for the different bodies that are affected by the event. It's say that is more assistant that uh, data building because it is uh, in a way a local, but at the same time, um, uh, it's local, but um, very located with its own limits in which captures information, but at the same time, it's in multi-connected to the different scale that are also a response of forms governance between the national, international, and uh, uh, there are different kinds of uh, emergency centers that respond to, to, this, to this governance. Um, this is uh, one of the... Uh, the yeah, common place of this building at this uh, central coordination room, and it's where the, the status of the event is monitored. It's in the place where the event uh, comes inside the building. And here I try to to put together the different performative uh, protocols that activate the event, the building from the moment of the event. There is an em emergency management plan that. Uh, uh, say, uh, that prescribe all the protocols for the activation of is not activated, and uh, follow inter and these different protocols follow international uh, measures of organization of military troops. So this is the incident command system organization where the different agents and um, response ag agencies are made visible by these colors best. Um, at the same time, when the, there is a certain level of emergency, they become the center of governance. We see here uh, President Joe Biden talking about the measures taken in re response to Hurricane Ian at the FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency Center in Washington in 2022. So there is, they have this uh, multi level, multi agency uh, connection. Uh, with the, the materiality of the event itself, the governmental uh, organization, the theatrical approach, the event performativity, and the possible simulations that uh, could, be, uh, could be assessed. So, through this, this is, I have several case studies, and right now I'm just starting with uh, in Switzerland. And that is uh, very interesting in a way because it's a small country, so there is a deep uh, risk culture. And um, uh, there's one of the um, uh, concepts that I am interested in the, is in the Sentinel inhabitant. Uh, we can see here this is a map drawn in 1911 by the 
a Swiss earthquake commission that was directed by Johann Jacob Kuhn, that uh, uh, it was uh, called uh, the first citizen commission where the nation was divided by, by regions and the citizens respond to questionnaires. And through these questionnaires, they arrived to uh, draw epicenter of the, of the, of the earthquakes uh, through the recent, recent emotion of the inhabitants. Um, in particular, I'm interested in the construction of this emergency management center that just started some months ago, the, the, the construction in the Canton de Valencia. Um, the architects that won the competition, Rubiston and Martinez, architects describe the building as a strong protective base. So we can see it very much in the image. Um, with the, uh, with a cloudy upper part that leaks the building to the sky with this idea of communication service and connectivity. Um, also, uh, one of the interesting things in this building is the is what is a public building, so it has a project for an artistic uh, it has funding for an artistic project that is was attributed to Karsten Follinger. And he's working with a group of ethologists who study the behavior of animals because animals are very sensitive to the telluric uh, movements that are the earth movement resulting from the sudden release of energy when tectonic plates collide. And also they recognize a um, um, reorganization of the material earth crust. Uh, so the project, the artistic project related uh, to put together sensor or trying to figure out what are the behavior of the animals uh, uh, close to the building. What with the objective, if there is a change in the behavior, the, there are some bells starting to ring in the, in the whole of the building. So this kind of projects uh, began to put in relation the cosmopolitics of the event in itself. Uh, not only relating the international response that we see that is very much the image of the building, but also with cultural aspect of the region and to complex relationship between beings that sense and make sense of the possible events. So that is why the Sentinel attention is something that uh, I have been putting together in, in a kind of atlas where um, Sentinel communities um, generate uh, their own protocols of attention, uh, trying to go uh, or to, um, um, to avoid this hegemonic answer of the, of the emergency uh, of the emergency protocols, but uh, creating them in a collective way. So this is a part of the atlas that is uh, the idea is uh, recomposing this uh, this relationship with this embodied practice of the the lele. Um, these different entries are going are recomposing the thesis or the territorial situations, architectures, and trying always to keep the thesis in a kind of openness and is and listening to what the current and changing moments. That is why also I am working with Elena Orab, an Ukrainian architect, and from the moment of the invasion of Ukraine, uh, we have been um, analyzing the resp response of the everyday life and reconfiguration of, of the, the urban materialities of, uh, of cities in, in Ukraine, and how protocols of fragility are being are being key to the Ukrainian response. And um, well, there are two exhibitions that we are working right now. One is going to be in the in the bunker close to the train station at the end of April. And um, next month of May, we are recomposing here in this uh, space um, an exhibition with all these uh, with all these uh, different spatial practice. So that is all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephanie. That's a fantastic project. I would like to start with a question on the concept of imaginary, which is quite present in your work. 
Uh, so what is the overall ambition? Is it to redefine what imaginary means in this context? Mm -hmm. uh, because what you already presented and the complex diagrams really point to a much more holistic understanding of what emergency is, but also the different aspects of emergency, connecting ecological emergency to mm -hmm. social aspect, inequality and mm -hmm. poverty and other issues. So all the dimensions of emergency, uh, mm -hmm. right? Not just yeah. climate uh, related. Uh, and um, the other question is more the methodological level. I really enjoyed um, the um, description of the activities of the emergency center. So what's the ambition? How do you research or are you have you already started researching the activities of yeah. the emergency center? The, with the first diagram you show and um, the complexity, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And then the second case you show in the Canton de Valais, where you actually see how uh, this emergency center is put into place, how it's connected to animals and species in the area, how it's, uh, it, it, it will function, as you said, how it, it will redefine the entire cosmopolitics of the space, but will also capture those dynamics mm -hmm. and will connect this particular center of emergency to other places of mm. emergency so I quite like the idea of the atlas of emergency as well uh, so uh, just um, a question to understand better your methodology how you plan to research this mm. centers of emergency yeah thank you very much for the question the methodology is uh, <laughs> I have been uh, writing about the methodology because I it was uh, super unclear from the beginning because I wanted to not recenter very quick the the project the uh, the thesis in a way and but, but at the same time i of course at the we this is not uh this is a four years <laughs> project so of course but uh what uh what i'm trying to do is like trying to um create different scales that i have case studies very much uh or, or organized in a way so i I so what well, I have here I put it also because maybe there are a question. So last uh, semester I was in Murcia where I am from, and now I start in the Switzerland case study. And uh, next uh, year I'm going to to the United States. So, um, so I have these three case studies very much organized with the, and uh, in um, idea to. Uh, see what is happening in a way. So for the first in Murcia, I was uh, making videos of how people are, are responding to the new moment of floodings that are becoming uh, be becoming uh, a cycle in the, in the last year. And here in Geneva, I also trying to respond to the, in that question, but very much with the buildings and how the emergency in a way is very much a structure because in other place, uh, also in the United States, uh, well, all the, uh, all the uh, way which we respond to, to the emergency situation comes from the United States and the moments of the California um, um, wildfires. So, um, <clears throat> Uh, so uh, all of uh, so yeah, I have these three cases very much uh, organized in a way, but at the same time, as this so is in a it's a project current that has a lot of change that we have seen in Ukraine, we have seen with COVID uh, that very much things uh, change uh, mentalities and imaginaries change in very uh, fast way. Um, so the idea with the Atlas is to give it, uh, leave it in a way open to listening order and um, listening what is happening in the, in the moment and how there are other ways to respond uh, that is, uh, uh, that is uh, clear. So at the end, the Atlas, I think that is going to be the um, operatory uh, framework of the thesis in a way. At the end, we have an Atlas of something of response that are a little bit uh, going behind this uh, emergency response uh, states. So that will be, I think, the uh, yeah uh, plus of the of the thesis. So I don't know if I was yeah. <laughs> so we also show the connections. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that is why I, I, I didn't explain, but everything is stuck in a way. So. 
the idea is at the end we can see all the connections or all these concepts that I am creating that are appearing in the in the thesis in a way. So we have this diffraction of element of cases of experience, you know, from the from the body scale to the planetary scale, and then there are these uh, tags or connections that uh, that uh, put everything put things in correlate things correlate elements. And in the three cases, we have a, a, a center of emergency. Right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So because yeah, I yeah. think this is really an original yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah, because emergency do not just <clears throat> appear miraculously yeah. and they're not so yeah. Yeah, either in a social or in a managerial way. Yeah. There's the center of emergency. And if you trace the activities mm -hmm. in this center and uh, what this diagram that shows the event and how they try to predict yeah. Uh, the event and then the different dimensions and what happens and then after the event, this kind of spread and the, the nature, the scope of all these social and cultural changes that are related to the activities mm -hmm. I think this is an ex incredibly original mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. If you keep it in at least in one of the case studies, mm -hmm. perhaps, and then show the connectedness in the Atlas. Yeah. And, and yeah, the yeah. It's very interesting your, your point in Murcia when I went last uh, semester. Uh, there was flooding and I visit the emergency management center. It was it was flooded. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, we see how also the event in itself enter in the, in its materiality way. The, so yeah, there are many many overlappings and affections that that yeah, that uh, that working with the different with, with different places and um, it creates a. Yeah, it, it permits, it permits me to, to work in this area of the imaginary in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much um, for your presentation, for your research. Um, I, I guess my questions go along the same lines mm -hmm. since, again, it's the first time I see the research, so I'm trying to wrap my head around what, what, what's the goal, where are you going with it, how mm -hmm. do you um, build it up? Um, I, I was wondering as you were speaking how you even define emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what what constitutes an emergency for you? At what point, right? Because it, mm -hmm. it can be a mm -hmm. such a, a small event that yeah. affects three people, or it yeah. can be a huge event that yeah. affects the whole world. And are yeah. you looking at all these different yeah. dimensions? Or mm -hmm. yeah, there's so many types of events. Yeah. There's, there's indeed such yeah. a deep. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's a really good question. Thank you very much. Yeah, emergency in a, in a in a way comes to the to the emergence something new that happens. But the thing is that we have been uh, responding to that. We have started responding to that the emergency state response. That said, something that is new we have to have to be controlled in a way. So it's and it's that that interests me. This what how. Something that is new that emerged in a way that we embra embrace it uh, could should not be an emergency state because uh, uh, oh, that depends. What does, are the thresholds to to call it an emergency state? And we yeah. we see that in that depends on the country, that depends on the different governmental organizations. Uh, from the Cold War, there is this uh, emergency. Inter international emergency response to um, to serve a uh, resource and ways and uh, best practice of how to respond to them. And also it has you no know, colonial aspect of uh, uh, it's not our, it's not our country, but in, in in some place of the world, there is something that happened. Uh, let's call an emergency to go there, to bring people there. And so yes, has a very prominent problematic ways in a way that so that's so, so important to be critical on this process. But at the same time, they also bring other ways of uh, of thinking. Or in, uh, for example, with Ukraine, we have been seeing how a uh, housing uh, response has been uh, has been uh, management. Ah, Elena is here. <laughs> Uh, uh, the housing response has been completely innovator in a way that uh, people moving from one city to another, uh, uh, collective housing were created in, in, a, in a super fast way, and it was created by volunteers, not so much by the governmental approach. So, so 
Yeah, there are all these uh, different uh, cases that overlaps, but at the same time could be connected and could create uh, other other ways of of thinking of of this response. Not so much from the top down, but more more holistic in a way. And also, the emergency is uh, is interesting how they are so categorized. Categorized the emergency is this is this way, but at the same time. Uh, you have uh, it, uh, in each new event, you have uh, um, different degrees of emergency, environmental, um, social. So and uh, there is always one that we take into account and we uh, we don't see the others in a way because are complex or but mm -hmm. uh, that creates problematics in a way. I think that from, from architecture, urbanism, and spatial practice, there is something that uh, we have to, to be uh, critical and, and to see yeah. and to analyze. Yeah, no, thanks a lot. It's uh, very good to hear you explain more beyond yeah. you know, the, the methodology yeah. and where you're going, that there is the, this critical aspect to it, yeah. which uh, I think is super important and yeah. nice for, good for you to really push that yeah. forward also when you're when you present it, but it's super interesting. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. Yes. Really quick question. Uh, the, the first one is, uh, so are you interested going on the short term of mm -hmm. the emergency? You know, how information is exchanged, yeah. how we respond and so on. Also, on, you know, in the long term, how you know, to prevent the risk yeah. uh, or how to manage, you know, in the long term, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's place population mm -hmm. or, uh, so what is basically the time scale of your, or, you know, or interest? Uh, and the second question is that here, you know, the big case studies are mostly in rich countries, I guess. Yeah. So now what about, you know, the developing world yeah. where, you know, the flooding in a, you know, in a small village in Nigeria is a completely different situation from, you know, like this power. And um, what these case studies is uh, very much related with me is where I am from, where I live in now and where I was living. And uh, where there, where I found traces of some interesting aspect that, uh, so in, in a way, it's autobiographical, these, uh, these two sub cases, but at the same time, as I, I say, I continue to be open to, of course, I have uh, meetings with people in Philippines that they are uh, telling me, for example, the communities uh, um, around the Chilimun River, close to Jakarta, how they create this, um, they are uh, this uh, open house that are the Sangar that are, that create also a space of collective response to them or collective attention of the status of the river, for example. So uh, uh, the case studies is just for a more idea of things that I know, that I feel uh, comfortable and, uh, and trying to also avoid the thing that emergency only occurs in developing countries. No, and the way we respond to emergency is here, is created here, and we translate it to other to other places. So that is why the social aspect and the, and the neo-colonial aspect of how we respond is so important in a way. And um, what and what was the other question? Ah, the the, 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 scale, the time scale. scale. Yeah, I also very much. Uh, I try to avoid also the short and long term response because, in a way, uh, it creates the this uh, this um, control control of the temporality of things and a short and long and long term emergency are happening every every time every moment. There is this slow emergency that they have called by uh, Nixon uh, uh, Nixon. I don't remember his first name. But um, and, and yeah, the and from this slow emergency, also there are moments where the response uh, goes in in very fast way, or uh, the attention is put in one thing that we have to respond very much uh, now because uh, something happens that their attention is down when there is the the environmental uh, collapse of the of the place has been in that way for a long time. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I, it's a very good question and I have not the answer for that, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's always 
um, this is push my, put my more question as answer, I know, but is this staying in the trouble that I want to uh, take in her away, or is that I, I want to, to, to try to do with this? So, uh, <laughs> thank you for the question. <laughs> So, are there any more questions from the audience? We have time. Yeah. Uh, last one. I have to use the microphone, I'm afraid, because we're thinking. I'm interested in the problems of this, <laughs> particularly in, in the first part. So, you deal with emergency. Someone asked you what you mean by emergency, mm. and you provided an answer which is very subjective, mm. because emergency responds to very very specific definitions at the moment through the world. Mm. And these definitions are conflictual. So, for instance, at the moment in North Africa, very very. <laughs> I just. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ask free. Ask free. So. At the moment in Northern Africa, there is a very political discussion of what an emergency is, as opposed to distress. Okay? And so how are you going to take all of this? Is that becoming part of your, of your PhD or not? Because I think a PhD cannot simply be about ideology, also needs to incorporate truth, facts. And so how are you going to deal with a possible person that uh, next time you say that emergency procedures are based on United States protocols. And someone says, look, I don't think it's true. So how are you going to respond to that particular type of questioning? Yeah, well, uh, I in thinking of I don't the think it's true, that's why. Uh, uh, thinking of the, of, of the history of how the emergency uh, state has been ha, have been in a way uh, created or in, internationalized. It comes uh, and the protocols of answer that we give. It's come very much from military troops and this uh, the response and they uh, um, the historical approach to that to, to respond to that uh, comes from I don't know how. Uh, what out uh, which is um, uh, moment, but from the um, um, wildfires in uh, in California and this incident command control that is the the, um, the how to say the protocol to answer and to put together agencies to respond to an emergency comes from that moment. So uh, not much of the imaginary of the emergency of the imaginary of the emergency state work comes from because it has different overview, but how we respond in a very specific uh, technocratic way comes, uh, has its uh, roots in these uh, protocols. So you're sure and you have evidence of that? Uh, well, I have been reading, reading books about <laughs> about how the emergency management has been developed in different years. So there are several so books as uh, all is well, that uh, a little bit uh, take uh, the story of what was the moment of uh, in which the emergency management was in internationalized and what was the moment before. And if we see uh, emergency state before that, we saw how, we see how lo locality is important much more than international resource, um, but it has been like uh, moved in a way. So with, when right now, when you call for an emergency state, it's because you are asking a organis a international organization in a way to put things together to bring this, uh, this uh, to bring answer to the moment. So uh, it has been this very, in, in from a very local, to are very internationalized that uh, that has created a shift. I think that is from the uh, moments of the Cold War, I, uh, if I remember well. But uh, yeah, there are protocols that are still, of course, in going on. Uh, but um, but yeah, there is a moment where we can see the shift. Right, and if if there are in, uh, if there are other other, if you if you have other uh, publications that yes. that it, 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 it will be super interesting to share with me, of course. Yeah, we have a yeah.
it will about sharing so if there's anything <laughs> that wants to be said yeah if uh someone else has another Thanks, um, thanks, Stephanie, for your presentation. Very beautiful, interesting, and uh, looking forward to see your results. And uh, I was wondering, like from a from a PhD candidate to a PhD candidate, how was your first? And also thinking about the question of uh, what is emergency. Yeah. In uh, the beginning of your thesis, you had a precise identity of maybe what is emergency, or maybe an, an idea, an imaginary of what is emergency. And I know that you already started doing your field work. This perception changed when you go when you went to field work and you started uh, confronting yourself with different realities uh, to understand uh, what emergency means in your work and uh, and uh, in general yeah yeah very very good question thank you very much uh, yeah when i go for some interviews sometimes i go with yeah i'm analyzing the emergency state and it's like what is that what do you mean <laughs> so yeah uh, there is always a uh, um, that depends when you go to an emergency management center and you ask people about that. Of course, it's very clear. But when you go when, uh, to this everyday life practice where people are taking care of the place that, are, that they know that uh, they are waiting for an event or they are taking care of an event to happen, when you uh, come with the idea of the emergency management, it's like, what, what, if this is an emergency management? I say, yeah, it's a way of emergency care or emergency approach. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, there is always this uh, multi-level of imaginaries in, in this, in this in thesis. And, uh, but when you go very precise of uh, or, and you ask the pe uh, people what you did in the moment that there was this flooding in 2019. Mm -hmm. So they are super, they, they can you describe very well what happened, what they did, what were their fears, what were the, so uh, in a way that this imaginary and this, uh, this uh, affection of the moment of the event, how the event was called, uh, the, if it was more, uh, it was a regular or a not regular one. So they are so descriptive in a way that uh, that are very interesting. And when you say, well, there was this management management protocol, and it was like this idea. Ah, oh, no, no, I don't see that. I I, I experience it in the, in this this other way. So there is always this overlapping between the simulation of a response, how it's going to to be, and um, against the everyday should face uh, response to that. So, and that is very, very much interesting. Thank you very much for the presentation again. Uh, we're going to have a break now for 10, 15 minutes. There is coffee. <laughs> <laughs>